Good morning, everyone, and Good welcome morning. to the Church in Ocean Park. And we're going to get started with some singing. But before we get started, just take a good stretch. Oh, so glad to see everybody this morning. And make sure your neck is loosened up. You know, sometimes I feel like I have Zoom neck from too much, too much Zooming. And your shoulders <laughs> <laughs> and, your, and everything. So we are going to get started. We are... Today we're celebrating the new year for trees and we'll hear more about that. You, you should see in the chat uh, the words for our opening song. And this is one we learned from our friends Magpie. We belong to the earth. We all belong to the earth. It's not that she belongs to us. It's we belong to her. And as you know, we've all got to stay, you know, we've all got to be on mute. Uh, unfortunately, because we, we can't sing together on Zoom, but our spirits can be together. <laughs> we belong to the earth. We all belong to the earth. It's not that she belongs to us. It's we belong to her. It's we belong to her. Sing that with me, please. We belong to the earth. We all belong to the earth. It's not that she belongs to us. It's we belong to her. It's we belong to her. A strand in a web are we. A strand in a web I believe. To own it, we cannot dare to dream. It's a web that we didn't weave. It's a web that we didn't weave. Here comes the chorus. Here we go. We belong to the earth. We all belong to the earth. It's not that she belongs to us. It's a we belong to her. It's a we belong to her. And when our spirits take flight and we lay our bodies down, our ashes may be carried away on the wind but they return to the birthing ground. They return to the birthing ground. Oh, sing together, here we go. We belong to the earth. We all belong to the earth. It's not that she belongs to us. It's a we belong to her. It's a we belong to her. Let's do that again. I see a sway and I love it. Here we go. A we belong to the earth. We all belong to the earth. It's not that she belongs to us. It's a we belong to her. It's a we belong to her. It's not that she belongs to us. It's a we belong to her. It's a we belong to her. Welcome. 
Welcome everyone. Thanks for singing and thank you for swaying. I love it. So the Church in Ocean Park, we are a diverse interfaith community and we're dedicated to social justice. We come together, especially on Sunday mornings, but at other times too, for singing, for education and for rituals of various faith traditions and to organize for action. We are a people who create positive social change in the community, in the world and in ourselves. And we look for ways to grow. And right now that includes many of our leaders participating in nonviolent communications and we participate in book groups. It's really a fantastic interfaith community. Now you may be wondering if you are welcome. Absolutely so. You are welcome if you are Jewish, you're welcome if you're Muslim, you're welcome if you are Christian, if you are more religious than the Pope or haven't been to church since your nephew's bar, uh, well, since your nephew's baptism or your niece's bar mitzvah, <laughs> you are absolutely welcome. And because we are interfaith, you're gonna hear many different things. You might hear some things that you're not used to hearing or that you don't agree with, but you know, we are together as community. You are welcome if you are over 60, woohoo, but still haven't grown up. You're welcome if you are recently incarcerated. You're welcome if you're feeling a little down today. You're welcome if you're feeling happy today and just want to shout, you are welcome. So. Welcome to the church in Ocean Park. And one of the things that we do as part of our being together each Sunday morning is that we sing a Tiknaha chant and we'll sing this three times. I have arrived, I am home in the here and in the now. So just take a moment, take a breath and center just for a second. And let's chant together. I have arrived, I am home in the here and in the now. I have arrived, I am Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Church in Ocean Park. I'm Reverend Janet Gallery McKithen and I'm the minister here. <clears throat> I also welcome you. Uh, I want us to, I invite us to begin with a land acknowledgement. All of us are on stolen land. Wherever you are, I encourage you to learn about whose land you're situated on, you're residing on, you're walking on, and wherever you are. I encourage each of us to learn the history of uh, how we got here and whose land we stole. I encourage you to get to know some of the natives in your own area today, currently. And together we can mourn, we can learn more, and we can take action. This morning, as Kim said, we uh, will hear from different people. And because we are diverse, you might hear something you disagree with. And that is by intention. It helps us to learn more about the world and other people's points of view. We can disagree with each other. We still love each other. We can learn from each other about how someone else thinks and moves around in the world. I'm glad you're here this morning. You are a part of the church in Ocean Park, whether this is your first time or whether you feel like you were born here and you can't get out <laughs> and or whether you rather uh, you know, this is one more Zoom call, but this is your community. You're welcome here and you're a part of us. And because you're a part of us, you can take part in a poll I'm going to administer right now. Um, as you may or may not know, we are recording the services 
and we do have a new YouTube channel, uh, but the part we put up is only the part of the speaker and the songs that surround that speaker so far, because we haven't asked your permission. So right now I'm going to put a poll up and it's anonymous. I don't know who's taking, taking part and who is not. We're, because we're trying to decide whether or not to include the community sharing in our recordings. Because as you know, hardly any other church does community sharing, right? Uh, so that, was, that is a unique part of our church that we would like to be able to share, but we wanna make sure that that won't stop people from sharing. So let me put this up. And uh, if you can see that, go ahead and, and answer that question. We are beginning to put recorded Sunday messages on our YouTube channel. Would it be all right with you to include community sharing time in the recording? If you have just joined us for the first time, it's okay, go ahead and you can participate however you feel. Yes, no, or I wouldn't share if you did that. And go ahead and, and just push that and then launch. Oh, wait a minute. There we go, now you can see it. <laughs> We're, uh, yeah, there you go. So go ahead and uh, you can uh, participate. I'm not gonna leave this up very long because we're gonna move on. But as you do this, I just want you to know that we um, we do we. I will share it with the results in just a minute. Right. So far, we have pretty good uh, amount of people. I'm going to go for about ten more seconds. Okay. Let me share the results. Okay, that's the results. I'm gonna do it one more Sunday and see what happens. So there are two people who said, one said no, one said I wouldn't share. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Um, I know that this past week has been hopeful for me. How many of you got a little bit of hope at least from this week? We know that we still have a lot of work to do, but we're now on a more different, more decent, more possible trajectory. There's something about decency, isn't there? I miss decency in the White House. I miss respect. And I feel a whole lot better that we have some. We know that white supremacy didn't go away. We know that oppression didn't go away. We know universal healthcare didn't suddenly arrive. We know that prisoners are not set free and trauma was not erased last week. But we do have decency, we do have respect, and we have a black Asian woman vice president, and now we have to get to work. In order to do that, I want to introduce my good friend who has been getting to work for his whole life as an activist, Jerry Rubin, who is the co-founder of Tree Hugging Friends in Santa Monica. He's an activist, a peace creator, and a member of the Church in Ocean Park. We welcome Jerry Rubin to share a few words with us. Welcome, Jerry. Well, uh, thank you very, very much, Janet. Thank you all tremendously. I wanted to just take two or three minutes. There's a little reading I'd like to give that I saw on Facebook that I th thought was kind of Neat. It says, advice from a tree. Stand tall and proud. Sink your roots into the earth. Be content with your natural beauty. Go out on a limb. Drink plenty of water. Think long term. And finally, enjoy the view. So, I urge you all to go to our uh, Tree Hugging Friends Facebook page and like it, and you can post pictures or things about trees. My wife, Marissa, and I started that a couple years ago, and we've been holding tree hugging days in Santa Monica for the past 10 years, sometimes at the uh, Children's Tree of Life that my wife and I were married at nearly 38 years ago and was one of the first heritage trees in the city's heritage tree program that they started five years ago. The city's been doing a lot of good stuff. 
And they started an urban forest task force a few years ago, but unfortunately, because of the economic challenges we're having, a lot of the task force and commissions have been put on pause and on hold. We are on the verge of getting a whole program started that would protect trees on private property, but that's put on hold now too. And I hope we could all urge everyone to bring that back because of the importance of trees in our community. We have over 34,000 trees. It's estimated they're worth over $140 million. And if you count the environmental benefits, they're worth over $300 million. The city says that our trees are our second most important resource next to our people. And uh, we're part of uh, a lot of groups. So we've had challenges over the years. My wife, Marissa and I, and a few other people started a group called Tree Savers a number of years ago to protect the ficus trees on 2nd and 4th Street in Santa Monica. I remember I was arrested there and $10,000 bail and spent the night in jail and a whole big legal thing. But we managed to save over 150 of those beautiful trees. We lost about 30 of them, unfortunately, but we did manage to get the city to start the Urban Forest Task Force. We have a new uh, forester and uh, a good landscaping program. And I think we're, we're doing really good. So I urge everyone to, uh, you know, come to our tree hugging day events once we get out and about again, or if you can with your mask on and social distancing, get out to a tree somewhere and hug it and, you know, virtually or physically and keep them in your mind. And that's about all I, I guess. Oh, one other last thing. I, I hope we could all continue to try to save the Muir Woods mural at Ocean Park in Lincoln. That's something that my wife, Marissa, and the columnist for the Daily Press, Charles Andrews, started a number of years ago. A wonderful artist named Jane Golden did that mural many years ago. It's been deteriorating, but we want to get artists to completely repaint it as it is. And uh, we think it's worth saving for so many reasons. And the school district is the ones that decide that. So we urge you to support that. And you can go to Save the Mural, uh, Save the Mural Woods Mural Facebook page to find out more about that as well. So thank you, thank Janet. You. Thank you, Church and Ocean Park. And thank you all. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you for all the work you do. Our connection with trees is strong and our connection with the earth is important. Thank you so much. Jean. Hi, I'm Jean. And today I'm gonna to lead you in learning, a, it's a round. We won't really be able to sing the round on, on Zoom, but I'm gonna teach you the three verses of Atse Zetim Omdim. So you can practice saying that to yourself. Atse Zetim Omdim, it means the olive trees are standing. I love that picture in my mind because I love olives. I've been eating a lot of Kalamata olives recently. They have such a pungent flavor. So the, the, the words are very simple. It's the words of the title, Atze Zetim Omdim. You say that four times. If you can't say it, just la, 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 la is fine. It took me about three years of singing this at Temple of Kiva to be able to get all those words out. So it's kind of a mouthful. Atsi zetim omdim. And then there was a lot of la 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 in the second verse. And the third verse has la 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 and then atsi zetim omdim. Again, you can just sing la 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 la. So here's how it goes. <laughs> Try that with me, or you can be an octave lower. 
so much Jean. Oh, I was having fun singing <laughs> with you and I can't wait till we get to all be together and do this. Yes. <laughs> well, this morning our message is uh, brought by Rabbi Jonathan Kligler. Now you might say, wait a minute, I don't see him in the Zoom room. Well, Unfortunately, he's got to be with us from, uh, I, I recorded my conversation with him just a couple of days ago. And it's, it's not what we usually do, but we really wanted him. And she, he's so fantastic and he can't wait till he gets the chance to meet us all in person. So Rabbi Jonathan Kligler and has served as the spiritual leader of Kahilat Lev Shalem, the Woodstock Jewish congregation, and yes, Woodstock, New York, mm -hmm. since 1988. And over the years, Rabbi Jonathan, as he's called, has overseen the growth of the congregation from a small once a month gathering into a thriving Jewish community with 350 member families and thousands of friends and supporters, you know, such as when we got together for Passover and had a virtual Passover just this past year, there were, I believe, 500 family groups that gathered for that. It was really amazing on Zoom, let me tell you. <laughs> and they, they gather and there's lots of wonderful singing. And this congregation is known throughout the Hudson Valley of New York and beyond for its welcoming and heart opening atmosphere innovative and inspiring approach to religious practice and of course, to great music. Uh, one of my most enduring, wonderful memories was getting to do a concert there with Pete Seeger and what an amazing afternoon that was. And you'll see that uh, Rabbi Jonathan really has a gift for touching hearts and opening minds in, a, in an atmosphere of general respect, genuine respect, and Kahilat Lev Shalom means the congregation of a full heart. So I will share my screen and we will have a wonderful message from Rabbi Jonathan Kligler. so 
good to see you virtually and thanks for uh, being with us this morning and we'll look forward to a time when you can actually be with us live and I know it'll be fantastic. So tell us please about the new year for trees. Thanks, Kim. There is a Jewish holiday that's not particularly well known outside of Jewish circles called Tu B'Shvat. Shvat is the Hebrew month. That's the name of the month, Shvat. Tu is an acronym for 15 in Hebrew. So even though it sounds like the letter two, the number two, it's actually 15. So it's the 15th of Shvat. And one of the things to tell you about is called the New Year for Trees. The 15th of Shvat, because the Jewish calendar is a lunar calendar, is the full moon of Shvat. Next month, on the full moon of Adar, is the festival of Purim. The following month, on the full moon of Nisan, the spring moon, is the festival of Passover. So a lot of the Jewish holidays fall on full moons, as we are a lunar solar calendar. Now, Tu B'Shvat originates in ancient Israel as actually the day when the almond trees would blossom because this time of year, spring is starting to spring in the Middle East. And uh, when the almond trees blossomed, that was the time for taking a census of the trees because the trees were the equity, the wealth of their owners. And so originally this was actually an assessment day for trees so that the tithes and the gifts to the poor and the Levites could be assessed on this day. And it wasn't really a religious festival in that sense until um, because Judaism continues to evolve and adapt until many, many centuries later, we knew about this festival of the New Year for trees but it wasn't really celebrated in exile from the land until the mystics of Tzfat, the mystics of Northern Israel in the 1700s. For them, the main metaphor for the divine was the tree of life. Now we know about the tree of life. It goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And we know that the ancient rabbis considered the Torah to be a tree of life because it's part of our liturgy. And so this beautiful metal, and we know that many, many traditions have a cosmic tree as a symbol. And what an apt symbol of the life energy of the universe, the unseen roots that feed mysteriously all of us blossoming leaves and fruits and flowers of the tree. And so the tree of life is just well, let's just say I worship trees. I love trees. Trees are my friends. They're my supporters. They're my protectors. And so I deeply relate to the metaphor of the tree of life as also the cosmic tree that supports and sustains all visible creation, the invisible energy that flows up and feeds us. And the cosmic tree becomes even more the tree as a metaphor becomes even more apt in our understanding of systems these days because we as the leaves have a job which is to metabolize the energy that's coming into us and feed it back into the tree and our task becomes even broader because when we drop the fruits and the leaves drop we then regenerate the soil out of which the roots again sustain us so the tree of life is just the perfect for me metaphor for the cycle of cosmic creation that we're participating in and that if we don't participate in, we'll fail. We have to understand our central role in feeding the roots of the tree just as it feeds us. And so that's what the mystics recognized as well. And they created, they reinvented the festival and to be a celebration of not only trees, but of the cosmic tree. And they created a ritual based on the Passover ritual. They went and said, let's make a Seder for Tu B'Shvat. And they took fruits of trees, four cups of wine, and they created a ritual uh, of, and let's see, the briefest way to describe this would be, 
they would say a blessing, ingest the fruit, and then with inner intention, understand that they were taking the life force of that fruit as a gift and metabolizing it through our body so that we can give back to, the, to, to life. And so they were celebrating that, that it's not only mystical, but it's actually in the laws of physics that bring, that if we bring our consciousness to our participation, we can enrich the tree. We can make it grow stronger. And we do that with our intention to be aware that the gifts of life are constantly flowing through us. It's a beautiful ritual. In the late 19th century, as um, uh, Jews returning to uh, Palestine were trying to reforest the land, which had become denuded over many centuries, they said, well, let's plant trees on Tubishvat. And so the Zionists adopted Tubishvat as a tree planting holiday, which is what I grew up with. And then in the last 40 or 50 years since uh, the first Earth Day, the, in, the birth of the environmental consciousness movement, Tubishvat has also become a celebration of, of trees as representative of also our physical well-being has become an environmental celebration as well. And I share all that with you so that you can understand that like other traditions, Judaism is always evolving and adapting. Hey, we have a holiday for trees. Let's make it real for us. So today, when we celebrate Tubishvat, we're celebrating the health of the forests, the health of the forests in the land of Israel, but also the gifts of the trees to us all the time. And we're celebrating the cosmic tree all at the same time, which is known as the tree of life. So this coming Wednesday night, we're going to have a Tu Bishvat Seder. It'll be virtual in our synagogue and in synagogues all over the country this year, um, where we will be taking note in the middle of the winter here in the Northeast, of the hidden life of the trees and reaffirming our faith that that life is not gone, but dormant, resting, waiting for the right conditions to emerge again in the spring. So it's a very heartening holiday, even though in Israel, it's the beginning of spring, the very beginning and also in California, and when I've been in California in January, I am happily plucking oranges off of trees. Uh, here, all we've got are bare branches. And so one of the ways we celebrate in the Northeast is we finish our Seder with a taste of maple syrup because the sap that flows in the trees is like the hidden force of life that's flowing always to sustain us. And uh, so even in their dormancy, the trees are fully alive in the Northeast, especially the beloved maples. Uh, I was reading that the Haudenosaunee people consider the maple to be the leader of all trees because it gives them sugar when they need it most, when their stores have depleted. They, they're from this region. I was just reading about that. Anyway, I love trees. and. Uh, uh, so this is a beloved little holiday where we get to focus all our attention on the gifts of the trees in our lives. Thank you so much, Rabbi Jonathan. Uh, now, I guess one of my questions was, uh, so you talked a little bit about the, the ritual. Are there actually prayers in the prayer book that you use for this? Well, because it's such a recent holiday, in Jewish terms, something that starts in the 1700s is like brand new. Um, <clears throat> the, the format of the Seder is very free. There is not a fixed text, but what the originators of this do describe in their text is that, and this is, we get deep into symbolism here, that there are, we go through four sections because there's four in the Kabbalistic tradition, four worlds, the world of physicality, which is the earth, or the, the, you know, the element of earth, the world of um, creativity, which is the world of water, 
the world of conceptualization with, or air, which, and then the world of what's called emanation, which is the unseen source, which we can't even conceptualize. And these four worlds in the concept of the tree, they're all operating simultaneously, but we need to evoke them and invoke them. So the way the Seder works is that for the first world, the world of physicality, we pour some white wine to represent kind of winteryness. And we didn't invent this, this is from the 1700s. We bless the white wine, we sip it, and then we eat fruits of trees, we sample them that have an, a hard shell and an edible interior to represent kind of the yum, the hiddenness of the life force in this, in this most, con most uh, uh, concrete physical uh, of world. And so we then say a blessing for the fruits of the trees and we sample almonds, um, um, oranges have an inedible outside. So the symbolism of hidden life within. And then for the second of the world, we put, we take our white wine, this is not good for wine connoisseurs, and we take some red and we put a drop of red into the white and we watch it um, kind of swirl as the idea of the incipient energy of spring kind of awakening the landscape. And we bless that and sip it. And then, then we drink, we eat fruits that have an edible exterior, but in an edible core, things with pits, um, uh, olives, because they come, we especially focus on fruit and fruits that grow in the land of Israel, if we can. Uh, like in the first one, we eat pomegranates, if you can. Um, but uh, olives, um, um, apples, anything that has an edible exterior and an inedible, inedible core to represent that life is starting to bubble up. And then for the next world, which is the world of conceptualization air, we're getting closer and closer to life itself. And so we, we put a little, we put more red into the white, drink the third cup, and then we bless fruits that are edible throughout. Strawberries, um, uh, can you think of any? Um, I'm blanking right now. Um, uh, but they're fruits that are oh, figs, definitely figs. And um, we sample those. And the goal is you say the blessing. And the purpose, of course, of a blessing is to make yourself conscious of what you're about to do. That's what grace is for, you know. And so you taste it, but you don't just swallow it down. The originators of the Seder wanted us to be able to um, ingest the life force. And if we did it mindlessly, it, without giving thanks, it wouldn't fulfill its function of enlivening us. And then we come to the fourth world, and the fourth world, we drink a cup that's all red. And then, which means that the life is fully present. This was the intention of the ritual. And then what do we do? We're in the realm where you don't even, so some people burn incense and just smell. I've taken up this custom because of being in the Northeast of tasting a tiny bit of maple syrup as like the essence of the tree, you know, and, uh, and that's the ritual. It's, I think every ritual should be, especially um, a ritual meal has to be filled with pleasurable tastes. So that's what we do. Uh, now, is singing a part of it? If you've got singers. <laughs> so so why, why don't we uh, then close out with one of the songs that you like to sing as a part of great. this celebration. Great, great. And it's well, great. You, you and I can do our, our quote unquote singing together on Zoom. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So this is this is, uh, from the spiritual tradition, the African American spiritual tradition, where the tree of life is a metaphor. Also, I don't know one culture where it isn't. It goes like this: Ain't you got a ride? Ain't you got a ride? 
Ain't you got a ride to the tree of life? Ain't you got a ride? Oh, ain't you got a ride? Ain't you got a ride to the tree of life? Tell your mother that she's got a ride. Go tell your father, oh, he's got a ride. Go tell your sister, yes, she got a ride to the tree of life. Oh, go tell the hungry, ain't you got a ride? And tell all the homeless, ain't you got a right that they've got a right? Ain't you got a right to the tree of life? Yes, you got a right. Ain't you got a right? Yes, you got a right. Yes, you got a right. Yes, you got a ride. Yes, you got a ride to the tree of life. Yes, you got a ride. Yes, you got a ride. Everybody's got a ride. Yes, you got a ride. Oh, you got a ride. Yes, you got a ride to the tree of life to the tree of life well thanks so much rabbi jonathan kliegler thank you and we can't wait until you are with us live on a sunday morning so thank oh, you do invite me it'll be a pleasure to meet you all indeed all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. thank you Wow, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim Harris, and uh, for having the rabbi with us. It was a, I learned so much, and um, I love the metaphors of the tree, and I know that Jerry Rubin's been trying to tell us some of this for years <laughs> about the importance of trees, and now we heard about it through a theological lens and about how uh, the, gift, the gift of life is throwing, flowing through us. Uh, through the gift of the tree and um, so we are going to have community sharing uh, if you'd like to, to uh, share something you can't of course ask the rabbi a question but you can you can ask a question and the community can answer we are a community of people who uh, have various opinions <laughs> of course and uh, we can answer one another or we could make just brief statements but i do want to acknowledge that um, there are folks in our midst, including Jerry, that have been saying, letting us know that um, trees and all of the earth ecosystems connected are important for uh, our life and everybody's life. I see two hands already. What I really appreciated was the metaphor of the divine, the tree of life being the metaphor for the divine, because in almost every uh, tradition, like the rabbi said, the there's some importance about the tree. So I thank you for sharing. And uh, uh, we have some special music by Kendall Rosenberg. Kendall Rosenberg has a Master of Arts degree in musical theater. She's currently a student at All Pass Divinity School, which is the divinity school that was co-created by Andre and Deborah, who are members of the church in Ocean Park. She's working on an interfaith, interspiritual masters of divinity degree and ministerial certification with an emphasis on the end of life midwifery. Kendall writes poetry as in the joyous posture of finding ways to bring love to others through her voice. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, and so she's going to be singing and her uh, wife, uh, Hannah McLaughlin, is going to be accompanying her on the guitar. Welcome, Kendall and Hannah. Thank you.
how would it be if everything that you thought you knew was turned upside down opposite from your point of view and how would you feel if the ground was really the sky and all of this time you've been walking when you could have been flying if you run a thousand miles a minute you can expect to wear out a few pairs of shoes if you forget how to love and take it for granted you can expect to wear out people close to you what if all the birds were flying just to show us and all the trees were really holding the sky up and everything that you do matters somehow what if heaven and hell is right now how would it be if you really created your life stories you told the good and bad that they come alive and how would it change if your words were like nails and wood you build your house but you forget that it's just a house you can rebuild it oh yes what if all the birds were flying just to show us and all the trees were really holding the sky up and everything that you do matters in the end what if all of our mistakes are forgiven what if love is a lot of listening a little bit of time not pretending we are caught up in a world full of daydreams what if loving what you have is everything what if all the birds were flying just to show us and all the trees were really holding the sky up and everything that you do matters so much how would it be if everything that you thought you knew was turned upside down opposite from your point of view thank you thank you so much kendall i heard kendall sing this before and i, I asked her right away could you please sing that at the church in ocean park and i thought it was perfect for the tree and i think right now a lot of us are feeling like everything is upside down and uh i love it's a beautiful song thank you so much <laughs>